In this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple game in Adobe Flash where we change the colour of a girl's hair. All you have to do is click on the buttons down the bottom of the animation and you can see that the hair colour will change to the same as the corresponding button. What you need to do to get started is actually trace a picture of this girl. Now I've taken a picture off the internet and I've saved it into Curriculum Drive. It's going to be your job to import that picture into Flash and trace it. I'm not going to show you how to do that because you should know how to trace pictures in Flash by now. Once you have traced it, lock that layer and we're also going to add in a second layer for a title at the top that says Changing Hair Color Game. If you'd like to make up another name for it, feel free to do so. Okay, so this is how it's going to look after a little while. You should have your traced picture on one layer, which is the girl layer. As you can see, it's still broken up into all sorts of pieces. I haven't grouped it together. And there is a reason for that, so leave it ungrouped and just lock that layer. And you can see here we've got the title just written using the text tool there. And that can be locked into place as well for now. If you want, you can give yourself a stage colour like I have as well. Just a nice light pink I've chosen there because it is a girly kind of game, so I've gone with a girly theme. Finally, the last thing we need to do to get this game underway is to put our buttons across the bottom here. So let's make a third layer called buttons. Now to bring your buttons in, if you're using an older version of Flash like I am, uh, we'll just need to go up to our menu at the top here and go to our window, choose common libraries and get the buttons up. Some of you though, or well actually most of you, will be using a newer version of Flash and you won't be able to get your buttons up that way. The other way to bring this button library up is to go to your file menu choose import and then open external library and from curriculum drive look for the file called buttons and that will open up this folder you can right click on any of these yellow folders in the buttons library and just expand all folders and that will open them all up and you can see just by clicking on these buttons what they're going to look like if you were to use them in your animation Now the buttons we want are called arcade buttons so in the little search box that you can see just write the word arcade and the arcade buttons will appear. All you need to do on the buttons layer is simply drag those buttons on down the bottom. Don't worry about where they're lined up at the moment because what we're about to do is align them perfectly. And the way we do that is highlight all those buttons by clicking and dragging over the top of them so that they all become selected. I then go up to my window menu and I go down to the Align option here and the Align panel will pop up. What you need to do is click on this button here, the Align Bottom Edge option. It's at the end of the first row. And when you press that, the bottom of each button will be perfectly aligned at the bottom of the stage. After that, we want to get evenly spaced buttons here. So what we're going to do is press this button here, Distribute Horizontal Centers. And that stretches our buttons all the way across the page perfectly, leaving an even gap between each one. Okay. Once you're done, you can just click off, and you can see now our buttons look perfect. We've got our girl in the middle and our title at the top. Okay, so this animation's now ready to be animated, I guess. You can start to put some code on these buttons to make them work. So first thing I want you to do, we're going to stretch this animation out to 5 frames. So on the buttons layer, I want you to go to frame 5 and press... F5 to put in a blank frame. Same for the title. Let's press F5. On the girl layer, we're going to do something a little bit different. What I want you to do is right click on the first frame and we're going to copy that frame. On the second frame now, we're going to right click and paste that frame into it. Okay, on the third frame, do the same thing, just paste the frames in. Fourth frame, paste the frames in. And on the fifth frame, We'll paste the frames in. What we need to do now on each of these five frames we've added is change the hair colour. We've got five buttons and five frames. So on each frame it should be a different colour. On the first frame we've got the yellow button and yellow hair. So let's leave it as that. On the second frame what I'm going to do is unlock the girl layer and just hold shift and start clicking on her hair. I'm not going to get the border of her hair, just the yellow parts of her hair. And I'm going to change that colour to red. On the third frame, 
of my animation. I'm going to click on the hair again, making sure I just get the coloured parts, not the border, and I'm going to change it to orange. Okay, so if I look, click on frame one, you can see I've got yellow hair. Frame two, I've got red hair. Frame three, I've got orange hair. From frame four, we're going to do green hair, and frame five, we're going to do some blue hair. So I'll quickly do that now. I'll hold shift and click on all the hair color. This one's going to be green. Um, and finally, on frame five, click on all the hair again, and we'll change this last one to a nice blue color. Okay, so we've got five frames now with five different hair colors. Now it's time to make the buttons work, so I'll do a bit of coding on these buttons. You can press F9 to bring up your actions box. As you can see, mine is snapped down the bottom here with my timeline. What I'm going to do is make a new layer for the actions. I might actually um, lock the girl layer again, because I'm not going to touch that for a while. So on this new layer, I'm going to call actions. I'm going to click on frame 1. And in my actions panel, I'm just going to write the word stop. Okay. What that's going to do now, when I run my animation, it's going to stop it at the first frame. So it just sits on this yellow head frame. If I was just to delete that, I'll show you what happens when I press Control Enter. You can see that my animation quickly runs through those five frames with all the different colors of hair, and it keeps repeating itself. And we don't want that. So as long as we've got the word stop written into our action script, it stops at frame 1 and it doesn't go any further. And that's what we want. The next thing we need to do is give each of these buttons a name so we can put some coding on them. So click on the first button with your black arrow and give it an instance name at the top. I'm just going to call it yellow underscore btn which stands for button. For the red one I'll write red underscore btn and orange underscore btn green underscore btn and for the blue button the instance name will be blue underscore btn so each of these buttons now have a name in our properties box and they're ready to have code put on them so on the yellow button what I'm going to do is go up to my window menu and get my code snippets up from my code snippets I'm going to expand the timeline navigation option and we're going to Look at this second option, click to go to frame and stop. I know that my yellow hair is on the first frame in my animation, so when I double click on that code, you can see that it comes into my actions box. All you need to look for is the line that says go to and stop. In brackets it says which frame do you want to go to and stop at. And Because the yellow hair is on the first frame, I'm going to change that number 5 into number 1. So it says go to and stop at frame 1 when I press that yellow button. It's easy. Now my red button, what I want to do for that one, I'll get my code snippets back up. I'm going to click to go to frame and stop. This time I'm going to stop at frame 2 because frame 2 contains the red hair. Let's just test that out quickly. If I press the red button, it takes me to frame 2 with the red hair and it just stops at that one. If I click the yellow button, it will take me back to the yellow haired girl on frame 1. Okay, I haven't made the other buttons work yet, so they'll just sit there and do nothing. We can get them going now though, so I'll click on the orange button. Go to my code snippets and I'll put in the code for click to go to frame and stop. This time, scroll down, we're going to go to and stop at frame 3. For the green one, click to go to frame and stop. This time we'll go to frame 4, which is the green frame. And finally for the blue one, put in the code snippet. And we're not going to touch it because it's already going to and stopping at frame number 5, which contains the blue hair. So I'm going to press Control enter one more time and test this. I can now go through my buttons. And I can see that my hair changes. Okay, so on the first one, it's going to and stopping at frame number one with the yellow hair. If I press this, it'll stop at frame two. This one will stop at frame three. If 
frame 4, frame 5. And that's basically it. Flash has written the hard code for, for us. We've just simply had to change one little thing in the last line of code. So if you look through your actions box, you've got quite a bit of code there. Okay. And that's basically it. If we go back to the timeline, you can see what I mean. Frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4, and frame 5. And you can see the hair changing as we go through it. So that's basically it. Make sure you go to File and Save As and save it as your hair colour game into your account. And that's all.